Hey everybody, how are we doing today? Looks like we're ready to go live here at 12 o'clock Mountain Time, which is where I am. And then we'll look at uh, 2 o'clock on the East Coast, just after lunch out there. Hope everybody's doing well on the East Coast. A little before lunch, hopefully if uh, you're making lunch or whatever, you have time to log in today. We've got the chat going up here. So if you feel like you want to... Um, Talk to me on the chat. Go ahead. I can answer questions or maybe you have an idea about the video or whatever we're talking about today. Just getting that set up so that I can see it clearly. Should have done that before we got started. But if you see me look off to the right here, so I'm doing is I'm trying to manage some of the the technology here to, to make this thing happen. Uh, my, my computer here is telling me that everything's good out there and you guys should be able to see me and hear me great. Um, as, as I do every week, uh, remember we're starting this video, this every every Wednesday I post on the SBSK Facebook page. If you haven't uh, checked that out and you just found me here, I recommend you go over there and, and take a look at that. Uh, that's sort of the baseline video we're gonna talk about each week. Post it there and I give some, some analysis, usually try to keep that less than three minutes and then here, uh, try to be a little more free form with what we've got going on. Right, this video, this photo we're looking at here, though, um, is from two weeks ago rather than this week, and we'll talk about that in a minute. But I want to uh, say the this week's video is from Warrington, Virginia, and uh, really appreciate departments that are out there uh, providing great service to the citizens and and giving us a chance to learn from their videos. Uh, there's a lot of departments out there that are. Uh, helping folks like me and folks like you uh, get good content and hopefully improve the fire service overall. Uh, the video is taken by Compaq2441. I don't think he's a fire service guy, but he posted the video and, and we're going to be streaming it live. So I really appreciate the fact that uh, he's got it posted there. And I want to make sure we always give credit to the people who are, who are streaming these videos. Uh, without them, well, this wouldn't be possible, right? A uh, lot of, oh, oh, before I forget, let me uh, point out to you, I got my Seattle Kraken t-shirt on, looking for uh, uh, NHL team starting next year, and, and uh, this is their logo, and I love it. I'm obviously a fan of Seattle, uh, but uh, looking forward to them. The Seattle Sounders are in the MLS playoffs, so things are good. Even our, our football team, 6-2, and two, so... All the sports are going good for us up in Seattle. And like I said, uh, anything you want to throw into the comments or the chat, uh, feel free to throw it in there, and then and then I'll try and get to it as quick as I can. Um, when uh, uh, if you have IDs, even after the fact, go ahead and throw them in there. And, and I always respond to comments, or if you message me directly, um, no problem. I I really love teaching i love this topic of reading smoke i teach some other stuff too tactical decision making things like that so we've got some new subscribers this week the angry alaskan not sure why you're angry brother but hopefully uh it's anger for the right reasons uh it's a beautiful beautiful uh, land you got up there i go up every year with a group of firemen to go fishing i love it up there uh van Muren boy 329 matthew Lyons. hey matt i wonder if you're Related to Ben Lyons up there in Seattle. Uh, TRF Fire and Hamdad 3. I was interested in some of these uh, titles. Hamdad 3, where would that come from? Does your daughter think you're a ham or something? <laughs> I know mine thinks I'm a ham. Hey, let's, let's kind of get going on the topic here. Uh, two weeks ago, this video we're looking at right here. This is a video from Stockton Fire. And um, you'll see... Uh, that um, on this video, if you watch it on, uh, if you're able to watch it on the SBSK site or you were here, we were talking about it. Basically, um, I used it as an example of, of some things that you should be looking out for to see if a fire attack is going well, right? Uh, whether you're the command officer uh, in the street, whether you're maybe a division alpha in charge of this front side, maybe you're the fire attack supervisor, whatever it is. You're the second arriving officer stretching a backup line. Um, we wanted to talk about some things that are indicators of a fire attack when it's going well and when it's going poorly. Uh, you can go look at uh, particularly this one. 
I use as an example of a lot of good things there were a few little things in here you could say oh they could have done this better they could have done that better but we're not here to kibitz what we're here to do is learn right and I've never been to a fire that went perfectly right I don't if any of you have I'd love to see the video right uh, but these guys do a nice job and uh, so I went through that and explained so some of the things we're looking for let's switch to let's switch to this week's video now um, we're going to do is is take a look at I think it's this one right here yeah so I'm going to go forward just a little oh uh, that's the wrong one that's my that's the SBSK we drop out of here sorry I'm usually a little more organized than this but we'll find it we'll find it Excuse me here while I go through my rigmarole. I thought I got it all set up before we started, uh, but apparently I missed. But fortunately, I know where to look, right? <laughs> okay, here we go. Um, this is a video uh, from uh, YouTube and uh, showing it live right now, right? So. Um, they've already let me back it up just a little bit because they've already deployed I want to get back here right to the start now this is stuff I didn't cover during the initial uh, on the Facebook post you can see they're already operating and uh, they're gonna do some transitional and you're gonna see some really nice change and, and one of what we're looking for in fire attack is water application should change some things for us as far as our reading smoke Right, so reading smoke always comes down to volume, velocity, density, color. Those are the four attributes of smoke, and we want to measure those against um, what's going on in the building, uh, what we what we're seeing now, what we anticipate seeing in the future, and then how things come to fruition. So you can see right here they're starting their fire attack. They're starting with a transitional from outside, and right now we have uh, pretty good volume. It's mostly black up here. This this is a pretty well ventilated fire, so our volumes, if this was significantly ventilation controlled, these volumes would be even higher. But we've got pretty good ventilation going on for our fire right now, which means this is smoke is, even though the volume's reasonably high, I would say it's not really thick. It's not those thick columns of billowing, just angry, angry, turbulent smoke that we see when, once these fires go into ventilation control. Uh, and we see some white here as they begin to operate and you'll see that the 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 main thing we're going to see here is a significant change in color right we go from almost all black to the, some very light version of, of gray or white and we get a lot of clean pristine dissipating white which we know is steam and look at the volumes actually go way up as they start to apply water and our fire front essentially goes away all the way through here from their transitional attack now we do have a high wind condition here but some of the other things that we're looking at from a fire attack perspective is is yeah we want to make sure we're doing our inventory we want to do volume velocity density color looks like they're having pretty good success right now but as i mentioned in the video with the stockton fire department a couple other things we want to be able to pay attention to if we can one is we're going to occasionally want to keep an eye on this coil of hose right here right as as they're as they're operating there that coil of hose will give me a sense of how far once they start transitioning to go inside we'll see that coil start to disappear and um so they've, they've made their good initial attack and right now we're even though we're seeing some progress here we haven't seen any movement here so that indicates to me they probably haven't been inside but now see as it starts to move um, we can figure that they're they're uh, getting closer and closer to the front door and they're going to make their way inside. They're still working transitional coming out almost directly vertical as they're in there by that door. Right now we have a high wind condition here. And one of the things that's going to you're going to see happen is relatively quickly because the amount of ventilation. Remember transitional attacks, right? They're going to buy us time. They're going to reset the fire. But the fire is going to come back unless we get in there and put it out right um, or we find some other way to uh, apply more water depends on how much staffing you have and all those sorts of things but by and large 
We want to do a transitional attack, gives us a reset, gives us a little bit of time to be able to transition inside and then extinguish it from the inside out. And they did a nice job of their transitional attack. And one of the things that surprised me about this video, uh, even with all my experience, is how quickly this transitions now um, with once they quit applying water and transition to the inside because of the wind fed condition how quickly this fire transitions out of the state where there's a lot a high volume of white uh, clean pristine dissipating white smoke uh, rel a little bit of turbulence but relatively laminar uh, with a little bit of gray black up there on the top because uh, that fire comes back and because of the wind fed condition, this is the, their reset, right? Their reset is not gonna last long. So we don't have much time, particularly in these wind fed conditions. And like I told you, it actually surprises me how quickly this comes back. Um, you know, and uh, we're gonna check around some other stuff though, right? So we're gonna do our VVDC. We have increasing uh, volume of smoke, right? Increasing velocity, we're starting to get turbulence in here. Uh, the density is still thin, but it's turning thicker as this fire starts to come back. The white goes away, and we're transitioning into gray and then into black, right? As the fire reestablishes itself, and now we're seeing that line move. Remember, that's one of the things I talked about before. How quickly is the line moving? My own personal take on fire attack is there is there is no stalemate. You're either winning or you're losing. And uh, if we're winning, the line should be moving, the line should be open, and the fire and smoke conditions should be getting better. And we're gonna watch here is for a period of time, the line doesn't move, right? And then I want you to keep an eye on the, the smoke and the fire conditions, but also just the smoke as it, as it continues to transition over. And as the as it grows, so we now we have high volume, high velocity, thick black smoke coming out all along the eaves here in the main part of the house, right? We got uh, smoke is pushing out over here, uh, a little bit lower volume. Remember that's on the on the windward side, but on the leeward side. Look at those volumes of turbulence. Look at the turbulence. Look at the density, right? Uh, velocity is telling you what's going on now, but density is going to tell you what's going to happen in the future. And in fact, uh, we're not going to be too long before we see that that transitions over to uh, fire coming out of these attic vents instead of smoke. As the fire reestablishes itself in the garage, boom, the garage uh, eaves are going to light off. We're going to see this now. All this time, if you haven't looked, uh, that line really hasn't made any movement. We haven't seen any sign of the uh, hose operating inside. Relatively soon, we're going to get a little bit of a of a hose stream out here from an internal operation. We see the firefighter come out. Okay, now they're advancing, right? So we know they're advancing. We're getting a little bit of white coming out. So the lines open at least periodically. Take that back so you can see it. I'm going to see this. We're going to start to see some steam out of here. See it coming out right here. We know the line's operating a little bit. We're seeing some change, making good progress, uh, making some progress, I should say. And we're going to see them operate out here. But all in all, the aggregate is that I'm not seeing the kind of progress that I would have hoped to see with the line operating on the inside. And now, once I know they're on floor, so there's a few things I know here now, right? They're on floor two. They're operating on floor two. Yeah, the charge lines are at least at the top of the stairs, and they're coming back towards the fire. And I should see, right, I should see things get a lot better. If we're, Remember I said, my personal take is there, you're, there's no stalemate. You're winning or losing, and I'm not seeing any signs here that there's, um, that we're winning. And those signs would be a significant decrease in volume, velocity, density, and color, right? Uh, really, I guess the only thing that would go up sometimes is the is the volume. See, now they're operating in this other area. And as we can see, the fire on the outside, the fire that's pumping it, that where it's coming from, is just not impacted even a little bit. Um, all the way down along the eaves, as you can see it, sometimes there, it's still black smoke, still fire. See, look at that, all the way along the eaves. And this is a pretty good indication that 
their fire attack while while what's interesting about what happens in this sort of environment is the firefighters inside might think that they're they're killing it right they're working hard they're probably plenty warm up there and, and they've made a good progress on getting that line up upstairs inside upstairs and to floor two no doubt they're putting out maximum effort the line's flowing it's wide open and they're um, moving it around they're moving from room to room right their perception of how they're doing on the inside i don't know because i haven't talked to them right in all these things i'm projecting just from what i see in the video and as always i could be mistaken i have no doubt about that but what i'm trying to do is, is put it into uh, my own mental model and say okay if i was inside this room i might think i'm winning this battle but if i'm outside of this room i think it's to me at least it's pretty clear that that uh, not only are we losing the battle but we're losing the war we have significant i mean high volume high velocity thick black smoke got fire um, coming out all the way along the eaves and even though this crew's been operating if we take the time from when we first saw them coming out this way from floor two to over here They've been operating on that floor 45 seconds to a minute, which if you're going to be successful with the fire attack, right, <laughs> that much time ought to prove success. Now, um, I don't know what their staffing is. I don't know how many people are on the line. It looks like an inch and three quarter line they're flowing, which would typically be enough in this sort of space, right? So the the if we look at the signs of success, the signs of what they're doing, uh, we, if we're on the outside looking in, we say, you know what, this is, we're not winning. Now, there's a couple other things that could be happening here. We always want to consider those, right? Uh, from my history, what I would say is if, what we could have done is if the, if the search crew was able to get in there right behind the engine and help them get that line up to floor two and the engine went up and they took a right back towards the fire, the search crew could be searching those bedrooms, right? The, if we look at this outside, the, there's going to be bedrooms here on Bravo, Charlie, and Delta back in these corners. And that crew could just be holding this thing off while somebody searches those rooms. And that would be an acceptable risk, right? We'd want to do that quickly. We'd want to do it efficiently. Um, but from the outside, uh, without knowing all of those things, and without knowing uh, what's going on, I'd say right now that we're at a at a point where we're not having the success we need to have, and so it might be time for a change in strategy. Okay, so what are some other things that you're going to look at as you're trying to figure out whether or not your fire attack's being successful, right? It's not a lot of it's volume, velocity, density, color, and those are really good visual cues to tell us about where the fire is, where it's going, and the overall fire attack. If we have uh, if our volume goes up but the color changes to white man we're doing great especially if the velocity we go from turbulent to laminar uh, with steam man we're, we're killing it at that point in time right uh, but there's some other things on the fire ground that you should be paying attention to in, ad in addition to reading the smoke right you want to think be looking at, at how hose is being stretched is the second crew arriving is the backup line getting stretched with ease What's happening with the water supply? Can you see it being done or can you hear it getting done on the radio? Somebody calling and saying, hey, we have um, secured a water supply, whatever your verbiage is, right? Um, if, if you can hear the talk on the radio, is it in line with what's common in your organization, the tone, the tenor, the pace, right? And those are sort of individual to the department, what your lingo is, what your pattern is. Uh, that's the ground truth that you know because you work where you work or you volunteer where you volunteer, right? Those are the things that you should have a really good understanding of what sort of normal is. So that if some things like if, if I was to combine this fire attack and I haven't heard about water supply yet, I'd be really concerned. I mean, they use quite a bit of water in there. Um, transitional now they might have a 1500 gallon tank which my experience is with 500 gallon tanks right so they may not have a water supply issue I'm just saying that if I if I took and said hey now I start to think we have a water supply issue or I haven't heard that there's a water supply um, established 
if we normally if if I'm in a department like where I was in Seattle where we normally use hydrants by this time I would have expected a water supply to be established right so what I'm saying is you should understand what the normal tone tenor and pace of your organization is and then have these uh, be looking out for things that are outside of the norm and as far as the reading smoke goes what we have that's outside of the norm in this example is that as they're fighting fire we go from from this when they're outside right they start to transition things get a little worse and then we know they're operating in here by now by now we've seen this water come out here we're going to see the water come out on this other side and we know they're up on floor two but things are just not getting better or they're getting better so incrementally sorry i didn't take myself off the video they're getting better so incrementally as to indicate um, that we're not having the type of success we would need to continue with the strategy we are working right now. All right, hey, sorry, I covered up the video there for you for a little bit. Hey, uh, as, as with every week, I'm um, happy to be here. I'm happy to uh, be doing this YouTube live and doing a little bit of training. I hope you find it useful. Um, appreciate it if you could leave me a thumbs up and spread the word, send, send information out to your fellow firefighters, have them subscribe to the page, get the notifications for when I post new videos. Um, remember that every week on Wednesday at the SBSK, we'll be looking at one of these videos in a short segment. And then on Thursday at 1400 Eastern time, uh, 11 o'clock on the Pacific and noon here mountain time where I am, where it's uh, another beautiful sunny day in Southeast Idaho. Um, Join me here and, and, and help me get more subscribers, help spread the word, and uh, hope to see you out there. Uh, got a good slate of teaching for next year. I'm firming up some dates right now. Uh, the first thing I have on the calendar is uh, Missouri U, M-U-F-R-T-I at Mizzou, their fire training institute. They have a conference, uh, their winter fire school. Uh, you can find that on the web, and uh, it's great if you're in that area. And with that, I uh, hope to see you out there. Phil Jose, I'm out. Thanks, everybody.